Hey everybody, welcome back to Magic Orthodoxy. My name is David and this is a tutorial. Uh, today we're going to talk about rough and smooth cards. Now the reason why we're going to do that is because I was going through my magic kit and I noticed that I had a, a deck of rough and smooth that was coming undone, it was in disrepair, and so I wanted to fix it and did some research about it and just wanted to pass it on to you. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of uh, different stories concerning rough and smooth. Uh, I'll try to uh, dissect some of them and kind of give you maybe the best version, the best alternative, I don't know. Uh, if you don't know what Rough and Smooth is, I don't necessarily want to expose it, but it is readily available to you on YouTube and uh, any of the magic houses. They kind of give it away and tell you what it is. Basically, Rough and Smooth is the ability to either make cards rough or make cards smooth. And most often when you talk about Rough and Smooth, you're talking about uh, cards that are uh, made rough and the two rough sides are put together and you're making a pair and that pair sticks together in the deck. A um, lot of decks um, come as rough and smooth decks where the entire deck is um, used and the entire deck is paired up and the, a deck is used usually for one or two effects um, that requires hiding half the cards that are in the deck and once you spray um, or apply the, the roughing formula um, the cards are able to be handled and shown freely by the magician, of course, not by the spectator. And then when uh, they're ready, they're able to push um, a little forcefully, and it makes the pair split apart. Now, um, if you have the Encyclopedia of Card Magic from Huggard, he has a whole chapter on this, and he um, calls this product Diakylon. Diakylon was a hard wax. It's not what we use today. Um, some people say Diakylon... Um, contain lead in it and that's not why we use it anymore or they say that diakylon was kind of what similar to what um, lip balm is made from and so you've got to think of that it's kind of like that sticky wax and there and there are is magician's wax now today and sometimes um, some effects use magician's wax to stick cards together but in those instances it's not um, a permanent fix it's more of a, a temporary situation and you kind of have to replace the wax with um, rough and smooth fluid or roughing fluid uh, the idea is that you do this, you do this coat, you protect the cards, and then you don't have to come back and touch it again for maybe even years if you take care of the deck um, well. Uh, the first principle we see of Rough and Smooth being used um, was by a magician by the name of Hofneiser. He's accredited with coming up with the principle to begin with. Um, there are also other stories, of course, about gamblers who use a smooth principle uh, to make cards slick. Um, slick Aces is one of the very first um, tricks that was based on uh, a gambling principle so that um, when you were gambling you could find the Aces because they were slicker than all the other cards. Um, like I said, we don't use Diakylon today. Uh, there was uh, a, an era where we were using something that was actually official and it was called Roughing Fluid. Um, now, today, a, a lot of people who make their own decks use um, uh, Clear Coat or they use Matte Spray or Matte Finish. There are some magicians who have played around with um, chemicals. <laughs> I don't necessarily uh, recommend this, but they've even used like um, resin or um, bow rosin, and they've kind of like cooked up their own roughing formula. And like I said, if you want to play around with that, that's you know it's your prerogative. Um, basically, I'll tell you the instructions right now, and then we'll go into a, a, a live tutorial and I'll show you what I'm doing. Uh, you take your cards that you want to do rough and smooth with. And you need to put them face up the side that you're going to apply the roughing fluid to. So um, you can use slick cards. Um, the slicker the cards, the better. You want to have cards that have a very smooth finish. Um, that's going to work the best. You're also going to want cards that have a white border. Um, that, but again, those are going to be the ones that work the best. Some editions don't recommend coating the entire card. They say that if you do that, there's the possibility that you could um, adhere them too tightly. I haven't run into that problem, but I, I can see how that could be a problem. Some editions make little templates that have a like a shape cut out in the back, and they put that template over the card, and then they spray the card so that only the, the exposed part gets the spray. So that's you know that's a pretty good thought. Then your cards are only stuck together in you know key points, and they're not completely covered. But you got to play around with it and and do what works best for you. Uh, map spray is very cheap. Cards are very cheap. So you've got a little bit of wiggle room to buy some parts and experiment. I wouldn't experiment with an entire deck first, you know, maybe experiment with a couple cards. You can also um, 
use the same principle with business cards. I have um, a video with Banachek. Banachek uses um, business cards. Business cards are smooth on one side and rough on the other, so they work really well. And nobody would suspect that rough and smooth would be applied to business cards. Okay, so here's what's going to happen. Um, I've taken my deck. Uh, this was a rough and smooth deck that I've had from before. It's been sitting in my magic box. Um, it's a Mirage deck. What I purchased from Penguin Magic, and obviously it is a deck that has a two of spades force card. Okay, now what I've done is I've laid all the cards out. I've laid it down on paper to protect uh, my carpeting. And um, the card side that's facing up is the side that will receive the rough and smooth spray. Okay, so anything facing down won't receive the spray, everything facing up will. So that's what you have to do. You have to kind of lay it all out in the direction that it needs to go. And um, then you need to purchase, or need to, you need to acquire uh, the spray that you're gonna use. Now, um, there's all different kinds of brands. I'm using a Krylon. Uh, you can pick this up at hardware stores, you can pick this up at uh, arts and crafts stores, you know, you can get it at Walmart, um, pretty much anybody that has a, a really good, decent paint aisle or a good, good decent craft aisle. Um, what you want to do is you want to get a clear coat, all right, this isn't paint, it's a, it's a coating, it's a protective coating, and you want to get matte finish, all right, so you don't want gloss, you want it to say matte. Now, mine says clear but I made sure that their version of clear was matte and not gloss. All right, so you have your Krylon. It's a, um, and what you're, you're gonna do, you're obviously gonna shake it up. Okay, and what I typically do is I fire a test shot off to the side because you never know um, what's gonna come globbing out of here uh, when it starts. So every time I go from shooting to not shooting, the first thing I do is I fire a test fire. Okay, so here's what I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do before I do it. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to have your can about three feet away from your cards. Okay, last thing you want to do is get globs of spray on your cards. Um, you want the cards to have a nice even coating. Okay, no bubbles and you want no drips or anything like that. So you want to stand about three feet away, spray a, a, a layer over the top of all the cards. And then we're gonna let, we're gonna let them dry for 15 minutes. Okay, so I'm gonna go to spraying right now, and you won't hear me talk. <laughs> Just want to get a nice even coat, and that's it. That's all we're gonna do. And now we're gonna let them sit for 15 minutes, and we'll come back 15 minutes later. Okay, so here's what I ended up doing. Um, I waited the 15 minutes, and then I uh, put two of the pairs together, and I tested it, and it wasn't quite as strong as I would have liked it. So I actually did three coats total. So I sprayed an even spray, I waited 15 minutes, tested, and did an even spray again, waited 15 minutes, tested, and then did it again. And then after three coats, I think this is um, the strength that I want. The trick with this is you have to be patient and you have to use a thin, even coat. Like I said, you don't want any drips, you don't want any spotting or anything like that. And you just gotta be patient, you know? If it takes, you know, a couple hours to do, it takes a couple hours to do. Uh, you want the cards to, to stick together when it's um, a deck, and then you want it to break apart um, when it's not. So just to show you, I mean, when you go through the deck now, you can't see the two of spades, see, anywhere, because that was the, the rough and smooth aspect. So the two of spades is now hidden behind the cards that have the facing. And the longer it stays in the box like this, the longer it's held and the pressure is put on the deck like this, then the cards will um, continue to stick together and you will have a rough and smooth deck. All right.